use track shoes more than boxing gloves, Skip Bayless. What do you make of these comments? Stephen A. Smith, uh, I make of it that Berto was just speaking straight from his heart. That's exactly what happens when you fight Floyd Mayweather Jr. And I put quotes around the word fight. And I will admit to you, as you well know, because you were watching my tweets, I got suckered in. I bought the fight. It wore me out trying to watch the fight because Berto's right. He runs. He ducks. He clenches. Grabs. He does all that type of, you know what? It's just, it wears me out to try to watch him try to wear somebody else out by running and running and running from him. And when that fight was over, Stephen A. Smith, Berto looked like he could have gone another 12 rounds. His face was completely unmarked. This is Mr. 49 and 0 we're talking about. And all the punches that he actually did throw did zero damage to Berto's face. That's just hard for me to reconcile. As is the fact that the judges are now rewarding Floyd for ducking. It's, it's like it, he gets rewarded for stylish running and ducking in rounds. And silly me, and this is my pet peeve, and I've told you this before, about trying to judge or score a Mayweather fight. I was taught long ago, back in the 70s when I started covering boxing, that the aggressor wins the round. That's why I had Pacquiao winning the fight against Mayweather because Mayweather runs too much. Pacquiao never ran. He's fighting with one arm, but he kept taking the fight to Mayweather. And I thought Mayweather just gave up and gave him too many rounds and that he edged him out in, in total points. And I was scoring it on Twitter as I went. But I'm just being objective about did you fight that round or did you not fight? And Everybody, the three judges obviously had Floyd winning against Berto in a landslide. Most of the experts, I, I saw some experts gave Berto only one out of 12 rounds. I gave Berto five rounds because Floyd didn't fight in those five rounds. And obviously I'm not trying to make a case that Berto is better than Floyd, but that's not how you win professional fights, by running and ducking. You're, you're the greatest ducker in history. That's, that's in and out of the ring. But because he ducked Pacquiao for so long, and now he seems, it sounds like he's ducking the healthy Manny again. We'll, we'll see if that holds. But the point is, the judges are so wrapped up in Floyd's aura, in his mystique as the greatest defensive fighter ever, that you, you can't give him points for, for having the greatest head in boxing. He does. He has the greatest defensive head. I don't mean mind. I mean literally his head. You can't hit him. He's great with his head. But that, that's not how you score points in boxing. You, you can obviously defend, but then you have to offend. And it's offensive to me to watch him fight because he's almost all defense. And he has no punching power. We talked and talked about that. Berto's laughing at him. Come on. And they're trash talking because Berto's just saying to him, that's all you got? Seriously? And Floyd's trying to clown him and show him up. And then I'm saying, well, Floyd, you should be ashamed. You picked this guy who lost three of his last six fights. Well, what, what are you trying to clown him for? He was your choice. Pick a, pick a better, a more worthy opponent then. But box him. Fight him. Give me my money's worth. You got my money. Just give me my money's worth. So in the end, Berto's just walking along telling TMZ exactly what happened in that fight. It, it's just a duh to me because he's just being honest about it. Well, first of all, obviously, I disagree with you. I disagree with you on a couple of points. When you talk about guys that, you know, he, he's running so much, you, you are of the mindset that, you know, that's not how you're supposed to win fights. I've made the argument to you for years. Sugar Ray beat Marvin Hagler that way because he was running a lot, and Marvin Hagler was a constant aggressor. He felt he should have won the fight that Sugar Ray ultimately got over him because he was the aggressor, and Sugar Ray ran, the la ran for most of the fight and would win the last 30 seconds of each round. More power to him. But let me say this to you. I, too, was incredibly bored by the fight. Uh, it certainly wasn't what I wanted it to be. Um, and at the end of the day, if that's Floyd Mayweather's last fight, he's not going to be missed because that's not how people wanted to see him go out. But I do believe, however, Skip Bayless, that you are ultra critical of Floyd Mayweather because it wasn't the fight that you kind of see that, that you wanted to see, that you didn't see what was transpiring. I will be the first to admit to you that Floyd continuously held 
when he was up against the ropes. The second Berto would come in, Floyd would hold him, you know, duck, do whatever, put his head down, whatever the case may be, to neutralize Andre, uh, Andre Berto, and that part was boring. There is no question in my mind that when they were in the middle of the ring, there were many, many occasions during the fight when Andre Berto just couldn't touch him. Couldn't touch him. Couldn't hit him at all. As a matter of fact, there were several occasions Andre Berto was the one ticking me off, and I love Andre Berto as a person, but what he ticked me off about was he was throwing these weak jabs. He wasn't really jabbing. He was like throwing these weak jabs to try to send up a right, and then when he threw the right, Floyd is holding you every time when he's against the ropes and you come in. And Andre Berto continuously lunged with his right, throwing his body into Floyd where it was it was easy to hold Andre Berto. At no time did he sit there and just throw a jab and then come back with a right and just step back or anything like that. He kept lunging in, hoping that one punch and catching Floyd would do the trick. You're not going to be able to do that against Floyd Mayweather. In the end, here's what this comes down to. And I'm dead serious with this. No matter how much you claim to know so much about boxing, and I'm not going to refute it, here's what disgusts me about you when it comes to Floyd Mayweather. Whether you like him or not, he's always been this way. The reason the mega fights with him were considered mega was never because you expected Floyd to go in there and knock somebody out. It was always because somebody else was supposed to be coming for him. The bigger fighters, Canelo, Cotto, the smaller fighters, Haddon, Pacquiao, all right? Fighters with speed, Pacquiao. Fighters with power, Cotto and Canelo. Fighters that were slower, fighters that were faster, fighters that were smaller, bigger, more experienced, less experienced. They were supposed to be coming for him. That's what made them mega fights. And each and every single time, no matter who you put in front of him, they couldn't touch him, literally and figuratively. That may not be exciting to you. It ain't that exciting to me. I'll be the first to admit it, okay? It's not that exciting to me either. But I can't deny his greatness as a defensive fighter. And Berto, with all due respect, is the last person that I want to hear that from because Berto wouldn't even jab. He didn't even try to set up a punch to get a punch. He didn't do anything. And that's on him. Okay, I, I got so many points and bones to pick. But number one, go ahead. I, I, I'm ashamed of you for stooping to criticize Andre Berto, who lost three of his last six fights, including recently via technical knockout to Jesus Soto Carras. Stop bringing up that really? fight, Skip. Are he you had kidding? one arm. He hurt his shoulder. I know, but he would have beaten the, he would have beaten the guy. He hurt his shoulder. Fight. You're 49 he had one arm. against Andre Berto. Are you kidding? Berto I mean, had one arm. You're just wasting your breath saying, he can't jab. Why didn't he jab? Why, why, why did Floyd pick him in the first place? I'm not wasting my breath. I'll, I'll take Amir Khan. I know I you're agree. ripping him for Amir Khan. I agree I mean, with I, that. I, I would have watched that with, with much more interest. It wouldn't have been quite the clown show that no, this I was. Watched, I would have watched. I would have watched. I would have watched Danny Garcia, and I would have preferred Keith. Thurman. Okay, I'm fine That's with that. I, I told you, I said, yeah. But I would have watched all him. sitting in the front row watching this the other night. Garcia. Thinking, why am I not up there? So, and then, then you dared. Listen, I know you love Sugar Ray Leonard. I love Sugar Ray Leonard. I, I have the utmost I regard for him. I do. But, but he was actually a two-way fighter, and it, it's you, you. You can't put Floyd even in the same breath he with Sugar Ray Leonard. He. Sugar Ray could defend like Floyd, and he actually that, that, could punch. He could punch. He he actually stung Marvin Hagler. What, what he could figure? hit back, and Floyd cannot hit anybody with any power or impact skip, skip, that, skip, that has any impact skip. on the fight. Hearns, Hearns stung marvelous Marvin Hagler in their first, in their epic first round. Not Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray ran until the last third. And I'm not knocking Sugar Ray. I love Sugar no. Ray. He's one of the greatest ever. We know that. But he ran. But Marvin Hagler, 
Marvin Hagler lost that fight because Marvin Hagler could not touch Sugar Ray. Not because Sugar Ray stood there and fought him. He couldn't catch him. That's but, why but, he lost. But, but in those last 30 That's seconds, Sugar Ray would just take the fight to him. And you, you could say he stole those rounds. That's I, not true. I thought That's he heard it. I you're thought in, he heard you're, it. You're disrespecting Marvelous Marvin no, Hagler. Not. You're disrespecting Marvelous Marvin Hagler right there. The yes, you are. Yes, you are. That's oh, not please. true. Oh, That's let's let's change the false. narrative here. That's let's, let's make me offending That's, you Marvin need, Hagler. You need to go well, down, please. We ain't taking the narrative. We ain't like taking him to we, pretty boy Floyd. Well, listen, really? you can say what you want. I got, I, I got the facts on video to show that. The facts on video? Floyd Money Mayweather, Floyd Money Mayweather is a brilliant defensive fighter. Offensively, I don't know. Most of us don't enjoy watching him any longer. With the last fight that he really dominated somebody, I mean, I love the show he put on against Canelo, knocked out in uh, TKO'd Hatton. But the bottom line is, outside of that, we haven't seen much from Floyd offensively. But you pay because someone else has convinced you they were coming for him, and they can't touch him. That's not his fault, Skip. That's not his fault. Yeah, it they is. can't he, touch him. He chose to fight that man, quote unquote, fight. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. All right. We're leaving it there, guys. He walks away unscathed and supposedly retired. So we shall see. Seattle got upset Sunday As by the Rams. Yes. Man is paid. No debate there with no Cam Chancellor, but the Seahawks still haven't closed a deal with him. They certainly could have used him. Wait till you hear what Ray Lewis thinks of all this. That's coming up on the other side of the break. Bell may have wowed some folks in his relief appearance against the Jets on Sunday, but legendary coach Bill Parcells was not impressed. Here's what Parcells told Colin Cowherd on The Herd yesterday. Johnny Manziel is an exception. Now he's a fan favorite. He's like a, a mascot player. You know the fans root for him. Uh, he, he creates excitement. And you know there have been, in a couple of cases, Guys like Tarkenton and even Russell Wilson to an extent yeah. that that have been very successful in doing this, but they're they're a very very minute percentage. Skip a mascot player. Yeah. Are Parcells' comments inbounds or out of bounds? You know, I must admit to you, Stephen A. and Molly, mm -hmm. I had only read those comments when I heard them just then. That's the first time I heard them. They didn't play as out of bounds as they read. So I'm going to back off just a little bit here. Obviously, I'm a Johnny fan, so I'll probably overreact here. But it's it read like a cheap shot to me from, as Molly said, a legendary coach who, to, to me, had, I think he said some fairly nice things about Johnny before he got drafted. And another great coach named Nick Saban, I don't think he would call Johnny a mascot player because Johnny tore him apart twice when Nick, as a great defensive coach, attempted to stop Johnny his last two years at Texas A&M. So it came across to me like Parcells is kicking Johnny when he's a little bit down right now. We know he had a big problem last year, and it took almost two months of rehab to try to address that problem. He had an arm issue in camp that limited his reps. Last week they said he got very few reps as the backup quarterback to Josh McCown, and he gets thrown into the fire on Sunday against the top maybe two or three defense at the Jets in their home opener trying to run the Josh McCown game plan called by a, a guy who was coaching as a, the offensive coordinator who was coaching as the offensive coordinator first time in the National Football League. Well, that's pretty hard. So you can dismiss him as a mascot player all you want, but I think the jury should still be out. I think he can play. I've always thought he can play. You just got to let him have a little better circumstance than he had on Sunday against the Jets. Well, I think that you're doing a disservice to Coach Bill Parcells because you're not listening to the, to, the, to the specifics of his word. He described a mascot player as being somebody who's being rooted for by the fans. He's a real crowd and fan favorite and a relative underdog. He's usually miniature in stature. He mentioned the great Fran Tarkenton who guided the Minnesota Vikings to yep. four Super Bowl appearances in the 70s. So clearly he's not looking at a mascot player and saying it in a derogatory fashion. He's just saying that the expectations are usurped 
by hope because you're rooting for this guy. And as a result, that's how you look at it. But he also pointed out factually that only a minute amount of individuals in that position from the quarterback standpoint usually succeed and Johnny Football is behind the eight ball. Let's also take into account the fact that Teddy Bridgewater drafted after Johnny Football is the starting quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Derek Carr drafted after Johnny Football is the starting quarterback for the Oakland Raiders. Both of them, especially Carr, are considered better than Johnny Manziel with more of an upside. Yeah, we'll, now, we'll Cleveland's see. roster might have something to do yes. with that. Their coaching staff their coaching staff may have something to do with that. You can say we'll see all we want to, but what we have seen thus far qualifies a Hall of Fame multiple Super Bowl championship coach Love to him. say Love what him. he said. Yeah. And I have no problem with it. None. Okay. Well, I told you when I read mascot player, it, it read mm -hmm. harsher than it sounded when I heard the soundbite. So I'm going to back off a little bit, but it hit me the wrong way last night when I read it. But this way, I say, okay, I, I got you, but I think Johnny is rare breed. I think he's in there with a Tarkenton or a Doug Flutie, who I have great respect for, because he's so athletic and so quick and fast. So we'll see how this plays out. We will see. Manziel versus Mariota on Sunday? Do we know? We don't know if he's starting yet. I think he is because Josh McCown's in the concussion protocol, but I don't know that for a fact okay. yet. Okay. We're looking forward to that one. That one is in Cleveland. Gentlemen, it was fun. As always, Stephen A., thank you. Skip Bayless. I, I think we're going to keep you, Molly. Yeah. I just think we're going to keep you around. You put a ring you, on you're it. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying. Congrats. I got to step my A. You're all right. Up you're all right. Too. Okay. Okay. I'm blushing if my complexion would let me blush. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.